There's a real love of the arts here. The East Coast is, you know, it's it's a hustle kind of place. It's, you know, you gotta you gotta get going, you gotta hit it. And so you don't always have the time or breath to think of the arts, but Newark always does. There's poetry, there's always music, there's always a party in the summertime right outside the park where I live in my building. There's always some element of arts going on. And then I think the again the murals tie right into that. The murals that Jocelyn is talking about are all around the library's neighborhood in downtown Newark, close to the Broad Street Station and near Audible's headquarters. Audible, the spoken word company best known for their audiobooks, commissioned the new murals and other public artworks as part of their Newark Artist Collaboration. Large-scale installations and public art. The community was invited for a celebratory opening event. Put murals all over the city. At our core, what we really try to do is make direct community investments. And so the Newark Artists Collaboration really kind of embodies that, um, working collaboratively with local artists and local institutions to put direct funding into the arts and creative economy here and help beautify our neighborhood. The 20 plus artists chosen to create new works all hail from Newark, as does the lead coordinator of the project, Rebecca Pauline Jampol, an artist herself. So we collaborated with the Newark Public Library to create three pretty transformative installations. On Essex Street, there is a incredible mural by Malcolm Rowling and Hans Lundy of Yendor. Yendor is a Newark-based arts organization focusing on art for the public, including theater and the visual arts. The Yendorians working on this project teamed up to tell a story with meaning for both of them. Hans moved here from Haiti when he was 10 years old. Malcolm's family has lived in Newark since the early 1900s. We wanted to talk about the African diaspora and how our, our difference and ethnicity and culture from the islands to here in, in mainland America, it still kind of connects and how we can use that connection to find community within each other. So souvenir de la voix means remembering the voices, right? Within like the mural, we wanted to really portray and show like our ancestors, but also our modern day traditions that we carry as people. So that's why you see like in the background, you see the grandparents in black and white, but you'll see that little girl listening to music and color and vibrant and everything like that. The little girl is wearing these ladybug headphones that speak to imagination. And at night, the headphones illuminate and you can see those throughout the neighborhood. Souvenir de la Voix is on the exterior wall of the library annex right next to the Audible headquarters. On the other side of the library, another artist team took an old alleyway and made it a place where children are welcome. Patricia and Nancy, they are a aunt and niece duo who have been creating work for a very, very long time together. When we thought about this space, which was for so long just an empty alleyway, they seemed like they could transform it into something that was fantastical and exciting for the youth of the area. It was like a, the sun never been there. And the whole thing was, let's put a sun there. And light, light and, you know, happiness. Places to sit, places to play, perhaps a table for children. They imagine blooms of flowers uh, everywhere in the alley. Our work is conceived in that idea of welcoming anybody. The third library artwork is in a courtyard where events are held. To find out more, all of the artworks have labels and QR codes, bringing you to an app where the artists talk about their work. The theme is really about movement and rebirth and connections. Some of the Newark Artist Collaboration pieces are inside Audible's headquarters, but most spread out into the neighborhood. A block away on University Avenue is a piece called Cosmic Microwave Background. It's outside of Fortress of Solitude, a comic book store that's been in Newark for over 40 years. 
So the idea came from Rebecca and Audible. We had a, a meeting online and they said, you know, we have this wall, this massive wall that's over a comic book store and do you know anything about comic book culture? And I was like, oh la la. <laughs> mm. So I said, yes, of course I do. You know, I have two sons and that's all they talk about. And we asked people, you know, if you were a superhero, what would be your powers? If you had an alter ego, what would it be? So people send us pictures, you know, of their children posing as superheroes and they were like, I'm flying, I have lasers coming out of my eyes, you know. From these photos, Irene created large scale silhouettes, transforming them with colors and patterns. And they fly across the facade as a swarm of superheroes. <laughs> I loved it, it was a great idea. And it represents the kids in Newark what they really believe in. Farther down on university, artist Noelle Lorraine Williams creates art that engages with history. Monumental Newark, reimagined sites of 19th century Newark, is a series of four billboards at the old Westinghouse site, an area that's been fenced off and vacant since the 1980s. I used to live near Westinghouse. I often go past the Broad Street Station. I want the public to understand the history of these spaces that they're walking through. Um, a lot of the sites that I profile in the images are actually on University, which was originally called Plain Street. In 1849, the great writer and abolitionist Frederick Douglass spoke at the Plain Street Colored Church, which was a center of the anti-slavery movement. There, I have the opportunity to show this connection between the space and some, someone, a luminary, almost like a giant, like Douglas, but to also have people think about the other people that made up this community. There was a community that actually surrounded the whole field. There's um, a house that was an underground railroad house. There was another black church there. This was the nucleus of the African-American community here on University, formerly Plain Street. And so it's just, to me, an opportunity for folks to connect. There's a certain kind of magic in our neighborhood now. I believe that truly has to do with the collaborative effort. It's not that we're just putting up artwork. Everybody is involved. We wanted to basically have a representation on the walls of the beauty of the city, the artistic depth of the city. So to have this incredible talent, people telling stories of, of their history on the walls, this is a way to, to bring people together, and it's beautiful. 